think I'll be a long up. Now going to be heading to uh, SJGA. So on Mondays I teach. Uh, it's a pretty big day of teaching. I teach at a uh, Sydney Jiu Jitsu Academy in Preston's, which is basically like uh, basically Liverpool. Um, so it's a it's a good 30 to 30 minutes to 45 minute drive, which is actually pretty good considering the. Uh, the traffic and I guess the timing of it because it is like you know around the after school hours time but um yeah so you guys will see uh, a bit later today but I, I teach um four o'clock till five o'clock I teach a kids class and this is where I'll get kids from the ages of you know as young as like I think three years old up until you know maybe the ages of of about seven or eight maybe nine um and then the class after that is just the older kids, so I'd say 9, 10 and above. Then after that, 6 o'clock till 7 o'clock is a fundamentals class for adults. And then 7 till 8 is an advanced class. So all up, it's a, it's a good four hours of teaching, um, but it's, it's quite fun. Alright, kids class about to be underway. like it's like a thing that's been around and it's been used in heaps of other areas where the I guess the topic of skill acquisition is like super important and obviously jiu-jitsu is like I would say jiu-jitsu is like a probably one of the you know most important uh, what am I trying to say here it's one of the sports that has like a, a massive degree of uh, skill and technique to it Obviously, physical attributes are huge as well, but I want you to look at it from the perspective of you're teaching someone that's never done jiu-jitsu before uh, how to do a move. Skill acquisition is is like very important, and how you actually uh, like just like teach and display the skill, as well as how you get the student to train the skill. That's like a that's a science in itself, and I think that that is like quite a complex thing. I would say it's probably harder to teach someone a barambolu than it is to teach someone how to like shoot a basketball. In before I get people freaking out about that comment, but anyway, like I was saying, ecological approach isn't this like new thing that's in jiu jitsu. Greg himself will, will attest to this, but um, it is like quite an interesting approach. Now, for me, where I'm at, I'm sure Greg would just say I'm like a, a shit coach for, for saying this, but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using, I'm incorporating his methodology of teaching into uh, what I already use. So basically, 
think De La Hiva is like a really good example. With De La Hiva, one of the like really strong ways of attacking from De La Hiva is to off balance away from the De La Hiva leg. Okay, so you take them to the far side. Kind of think of almost like a waiter style entry without the scoop, just like a pan grip. Once you pick the foot up off the floor, it's a pretty good off balance. That's where you can start to get to um, your leg entanglements and that's where you can start to set up uh, a lot of inside spins. So if we first look at it from like a, a detailed base thing, I first spend some time explaining uh, from a technical perspective how to actually do an off balance, how to lift someone's foot off the floor and uh, some important details that people uh, people should be aware of and the particular groups and obviously enforcing that like foundational um, principle of lift the foot off the floor, take them to the far side. Um, and then what we can do is those task-based games. And so kind of going off what Greg does, he talks about, he first describes like the, the outline of the game, uh, person, uh, one person on top, one person on the bottom. This is for the context of De La Hiva. And um, person on top, Oh, sorry, person on bottom is trying to lift the pers uh, the top player's foot off the floor. Person on top, you're trying to keep that foot on the floor. And then another thing that I, uh, I've noticed him say is he references what kind of game it is. Uh, like as an example, he'll say if it's a continuous game, you don't stop once you've achieved the objective. You, uh, you just continue going. And I think you have to, I guess like to incorporate that, you have to really understand like, I guess the position and almost to uh, figure out whether continuous is beneficial or detrimental for not just the person that's trying to lift the foot off the floor in this case, but the person on top. So as an example with the De La Hiva game, I will say it's a continuous game. Lift that De La Hiva foot off the floor. Because it's continuous, you're just trying to hold the foot off the floor for as long as you can. And the person on top, he's gonna try and drive that foot back down to the floor. Okay, so what this does is it's actually reinforcing, I guess, De La Hiva passing and defense, uh, like skill acquisition for the guy um, on top. So the guy on top, he's going to start learning not only how to stop his foot coming off the floor, but if his foot comes off the floor, he's thinking, oh, I'm losing the game. I'm gonna try and drive that foot all the way back down to the floor. So yeah, I think it's like quite a, quite a handy game uh, like quite a handy tool for enforcing like some really important things because again I guess like uh, kind of going to to what uh, Greg Souders was saying you know I've seen so many people that uh, understand or understand the details of the technique but because they haven't spent enough time playing those games because it, it is it does come down to a matter of just whoever wins like you know a like those little mini games like in the the instructionals that i that i have i always talk about the, the micro battles and stuff um this is like basically what the ecological approach is is turning jujitsu into a bunch of uh of mini games micro battles games of winning the micro battles um but um yeah so you get a lot of people that understand the technique overall but what they what they will do is they'll emphasize like you know how to how to like <coughs> <coughs> sorry they will emphasize like how to use a grip like I don't know how to rotate your forearm in a grip I'll, I'm just I'm just picking some like random somewhat insignificant thing as opposed to like the the more important goal which is winning like whatever micro battle micro game let's call it micro game um mini game i guess because i we're starting to get too close to micro adjustments whatever like micro or miniature game you're trying to win for that respective position um but yeah so these people haven't put enough time developing the ability and skill to win those micro battles and micro and mini games and instead they're just focusing on a bunch of other t details which are for sure great to know. They're great one percenters to know, but they're not essential for making the, the technique work. So that's like, a, that's like a big thing.
with the ecological approach. I think the whole idea is it's, it's really forcing you to really understand what is making the technique work. When you put it into a game, there's almost like a smaller focus. Like the focus is smaller, but you're almost getting, like making more gains as opposed to just trying to wrap out the entire move in a sparring, uh, sparring scenario. So um, yeah, I definitely think that it's extremely valuable. But at the same time, you know, with uh, there are there are some positions which I think would be quite hard to to do the ecological approach solely on its own without the um, without you know showing a technique and having a name for a technique. So as an example, like I look at say like we've been working the Leandro Low Spider Guard thing quite recently, and um, sorry. What I mean is the Leandro Lowe hybrid guard, the pan grip and the, the spider guard. And I know it's it's quite hard to turn that into a ecological game, in my opinion. You can for sure, but more so what I'm saying is you have to show the position and the technique first, and then you can explain like the rules of the, the position. It's like so far the rule of the, the Leandro um, position that, that we've been working with so far is whichever foot is on the bicep your opponent can't come close to that foot okay he can't be on the same side as that foot you basically want to have your hips on the outside so your opponents like your body or rather how am i how am i trying to say this the side of your body that has the pan grip is completely like side on to your opponent leaving the foot on bicep side completely like on the other side of your body so your opponent's going to be really far away from that leg makes the throw by really hard to get that get to that leg so i guess like maybe if you were to do like a ecological approach to to that game it would be say starting like pan and sleeve de la Hiva, and the goal is to get like to put yourself in that position okay so it means you're gonna have to safely enter that position without your opponent your partner sorry throwing your leg across your body um, but yeah there's a lot of things there's like so many other variables that go into that position I would say like just thinking about it now because I'm just going through like because I've listened to a, a bunch of Greg Sata stuff and actually I genuinely really like his stuff um, and that's why I, I incorporate a bit of it but I do think that it's harder to apply in the gi just because of all the, I guess, the other factors that are involved in, in the gi. So what I do, like I said, is I have a technique, an explanation, I go into details. Um, but within that, uh, I will, from a technique, I will talk about an underlying rule or concept or principle that uh, the technique kind of embodies if that makes sense and so from there it makes it a bit easier for people to I guess apply it to a like a task based game so going back to that De La Hiva example when I teach De La Hiva to X guard I'm always teaching you know lift the foot off the floor put them on a knee it's much easier for you to get to the legs that way. If you don't do that, that foot is on the floor, it's, they're in a much more stable position. You have an off balance there. But yeah, so to, to summarize again, so we have a, a technique, have a name for the technique so people can associate it with something. Then from there, we're looking at uh, what that tech, what kind of rule, principle, or concept that technique embodies. Um, or follows rather and then from there we can turn it into a task-based game and I definitely do agree it's not specific training I think specific training is really broad um, which is ironic because it's called specific training whereas the ecological approach involves much more specific training I guess or games rather um, like if I say specific train from De La Hiva guard, pass first sweep, it's not really the same as start in a guard with your feet on the outside, have a grip on the pants, have a grip on the 
collar and try and lift their foot off the floor. I'm sure you're going to use the Delaheva hook, I'm sure, but the idea is when you use that that kind of verbiage, it kind of it, it makes people perceive it in a different way. I think that's like one of the, the big things that I found with um, the ecological approach. Another example was when I started using the ecological approach when I was teaching high knee shield passing. So what I looked at, and again, I'm kind of just, I, I haven't looked into it that much. I have listen, I've listened to like a bunch of podcasts, but it, just, it doesn't really go into like specific examples examples i probably should contact greg uh, greg for this case but what i what i looked at was if you start in a high knee shield and you're on top and you're trying to you're trying to pass or more so you're trying to get chest on chest i'm looking at like the all the all the things that i can do to help get me to that chest on chest position so for starters in knee shield if your opponent's top shoulder is off the floor, their knee shield is going to be a bit stronger. If that shoulder is flat on the floor, it's easier to flatten that hip out. So, first thing is, alright, how can we put that shoulder on the floor? And so, one thing I found was, if I covered the bottom knee line, it was easier for me, or kind of similar to an over-under, it was easier for me to flatten that top shoulder to the floor. So, we had that first thing. But then what I started to notice was that, as I try to cover that bottom knee line, people start connecting their elbow to their knee. So they kind of like tuck their bicep under their knee. So then I'm thinking, all right, another thing that I have to do is separate the elbow from the knee. Okay, so now we're getting into a, to another thing. Now I'm thinking, what's, a, what's actually like a good way of me, uh, another way, sorry, of me redirecting and pinning the, the top shoulder. Uh, if I put my forehead on the top shoulder, makes it a bit awkward for them to frame and I can almost use the, the weight going through my forehead to kind of start pinning that shoulder to the floor as well as covering that bottom knee. Alright so now we've got like a, a few more things then basically each time I, I, I've, I've come up with a thing I'm also noticing like a, a response the person on bottom is doing. Anyway so after figuring out these things as well as obviously clearing the, the top knee shield um, like just pulling the top knee away from the torso and covering, sorry, covering the top knee. That's also what I'm trying to say. So after figuring those four things, now I, when I went into the ecological approach style training, what I did was first round, it was, we added constraints. So the person on top has to cover the bottom knee line. So it was really like basic uh, ecological, sorry, task-specific uh, task games, task-based games. So a person on, on top is just trying to cover the bottom knee line. And then after that, the person on top is going to try and separate the knee from the elbow. A right, person on top is going to try and pin the top shoulder to the floor. And so then you almost like add more and more layers to the task-based games. And then you do reach a point where you could potentially argue it's like full, full specific training. But I think doing it that way is going to be a lot more productive than specific training from knee shield half guard. Try and get chest on chest. People, people, a lot of people don't really know how to get chest on chest. So I guess that's when you add in those like games where there's like specific, relevant, and important goals then it's going to really make make it a lot easier and make it you know make it a lot easier for people to actually get chest on chest half guard so i noticed from that that i was actually after spending I spent like almost a month maybe a bit less uh working on that stuff the half guard passing and i found that you know, like i was pretty much every time i rolled i was just forcing flattened out half guard and passing now obviously i'm i'm branching out i'm working other passes again but it's now uh, like a tool that I have anytime I get into a high knee shield scenario I feel really confident in passing whether it's knee cutting um, or forcing chest on chest flattened out half guard so um yeah like it's it it really it really is a legit way of of uh, skill acquisition I guess develop developing your techniques
But um, other thing as well is I find it really beneficial for teaching kids. So you'll probably notice in like uh, the vlogs that I've done, sorry, uh, from earlier today, that uh, I was using, I was doing heaps of task-based games with kids. I'm still figuring out how, how to make it work. I think as well, like, if I if I can't line up a good task-based game, it's not because the the method sucks, it's more because my understanding of it sucks. So I find that the better I understand a position, the the better my like task-based game is going to be. Um, it's it's really a thing. So definitely been a lot of times where I have had to kind of swallow my ego on that, but then I realize I'm happy I actually took the time to, you know acknowledge that I wasn't doing it that well and I had to spend some time figuring out the position more so that I could turn it into a, a game I guess.